Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well what I've got here is a TomTom Tom Go 300 satnav. Uh, this is about 10 years old, these were, these were very popular about 10 years ago. They cost quite a lot of money compared to the satnavs of today. They were about three and f uh, between three and four hundred pounds um, and they were very chunky as you can see because of the large antenna they required in the back uh, and obviously um, all of the circuitry would, wouldn't have been as, as compact as it is today um, because most of it would have been custom made um, just, for, just for consumer level sat navs but uh, this one's missing its SD card which would have contained the maps um, so I thought I'd tear this down and see what's inside it Right, well now that I've undone the uh, outer casing, as you can see the majority of the space inside is taken up by this large loudspeaker, um, which would obviously speak the instructions to the driver. Um, but just above that we've got the actual GPS antenna. Um, now this, one, this doesn't actually contain any electronics as such, it may have a few um, discrete components like a couple of resistors or something, um, but the actual antenna itself is nothing more than a couple of metallic plates with a, a ceramic in between them. Uh, to pick up the GPS signal. Uh, that's then sent through this uh, coax cable here, this little grey coax that we sent down onto the main board. Now the main board was covered in this um, this uh, foil which is uh, to prevent RF interference and then there's further, um, there's a small can under here to prevent RF interference even further. Um, but on here we've got a high frequency connector which is for an for an external antenna. Um, I'm not really sure what you'd use that for because um, these, these sat-navs have built-in antenna which is usually more than capable of, of uh, picking up a decent signal so maybe that was just um, an additional extra they added on. Um, we've got a small um, proprietary connector here which would be for charging and um, for connecting the device to USB for updating the firmware and such. We've got a small power management IC here. Um, we've got a tactile switch for resetting it. Uh, under here, I'm, I'm going to open this up in a moment, but again, we've got a small SD card slot here. And on the underside of the board, we've got a much larger can, uh, which again, I'll take that off in a moment and we'll see what's underneath it. Um, the, the, I'm guessing the screen can be um, controller for the LCD and the touch screen is, is going to be under here and uh, there's a few small ribbon cables and connecting cables over to the other components within the case um, but I'll just take these off and I'll show you what's inside them. Okay well I've taken the main board out of the sat nav now and I've taken all the little cans off of it and as you can see it's got some rather interesting components on here. I'll start on the other side of the board um, where as I said I mentioned I was going to take this off. Um, now this is just a small uh, four bits of flash memory here. This is probably just to hold the firmware for the for the device to boot up because all of the maps uh, are held on the SD card which unfortunately was not in this unit. Um, we've got a small 12 megahertz crystal oscillator up here. Uh, a couple of capacitors but nothing really nothing really interesting on that side. But on this side, the first thing which which um, which I was curious of was this large um, capacitor, which is um, soldered onto the board, and then it's kept just behind the speaker. Um, I was quite I was quite bemused by this because the fact they'd use an electrolytic capacitor instead of an aluminium one. Um, I mean, it's not incredibly high power. It's only uh, 2,200 microfarads, and I've checked on Google, and these these capacitors were available very cheaply. Uh, even 10 years ago, so they could have easily placed uh, an aluminium capacitor on here, but I suppose uh, maybe there was a problem designing the board to try and fit this uh, aluminium capacitor in this area because you've got a small, lot of small um, chip ICs and small discrete components. Um, we've got a USB port here which is for charging uh, and possibly for firmware, down, uh, for firmware download. Uh, the processor over here is a 266 megahertz ARM processor. Um, this is quite good because it's got a built-in uh, LCD controller, built-in touchscreen controller, um, various other functions which which control the USB and everything else. Everything is done by the um, processor here. We've got a couple of um, ICs here which are 16 megs each. Uh, these are um, just normal flash RAM. Uh, sorry, these are just normal um, SRAM. Sorry. 
uh, we've got a small gate array here made by NEC. Now this is a high density gate array, it's not an FPGA or a CPLD. Um, obviously I couldn't, the only information I could find on Google for this was, uh, was the original part number. I can't, I have no idea what this is uh, programmed to do, but because I've checked all across the board and I can't find a dedicated GPS receiver chip, uh, I'm guessing that they've programmed this to, to act as a GPS receiver, and also the fact that it's so close to the antenna, um, which is just here, it's, it's, it's a definite possibility. But over here we've got a small uh, digital to analog converter, which is for the um, for the audio output. We've got a small op amp here for the sound, and I think that this capacitor here is most likely going to be used to um, to run the speaker because it's quite large and relatively high power. Uh, we've got a small LCD um, flex flex uh, PCB connector here, which is for the LCD. Uh, the touchscreen. Uh, connector is just here so this would run into run onto the board here um, we've also got a small charging port at the top here we've got the speaker output over on this side and uh, just a few few ICs for power management and a uh, few capacitors and uh, an inductor there so it's a relatively basic design and um, very very well built, very very compact and uh, quite high density for the time. I mean, bearing in mind this is at least 10 years old um, because this, these sat-navs were, I think, uh, they, these were released in either 2003 or 2004. Um, but I'll let you have a look at the rest of the chassis which I took this out of. And as you can see, the majority of it is taken up by this... Um, by the speaker, but just under here we've got a small uh, 3.6 volt lithium battery to power the device. Uh, but also this uh, doesn't have any power management on the battery itself because it's just got a small um, two pin battery connector. So there's no um, data signal coming from the battery. So all of the power management um, is done by the PCB. Uh, this means that replacing the battery would be relatively straightforward because you don't have to ensure that the um, battery is compatible with the board as such because um, as, long as, it, um, as long as it gives out a 3.6 volt uh, sig uh, power signal then, uh, then it will work. Um, but the rest of it is, um, there's not really much in here. Obviously you've got the touch screen which is a separate device uh, on this flex PCB. Um, you've got the flex for the um, for the touch screen you've got the antenna um, cable there, speaker connection and um, battery connector but apart from that it's, it's relatively straightforward and um, it's very well built I mean all of this is um, all of this is quite strong you've got a lot of metal in here um, all of this is ABS plastic so compared to the sat navs of today which um, there's virtually no metal in them it's all plastic um, it's quite a well built unit and probably withstand quite a substantial drop if you were to drop it getting out of your car or something well thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have another video up soon okay well after I took the PCB out which I thought was just a GPS antenna I also realized that underneath it had a large number of uh, components underneath these cans now what I thought was um, the flex PCB for the touchscreen controller was actually a flex PCB going up to this dedicated GPS board so uh, I'm not quite sure what this gate array is doing because um, previously I thought that it was for the GPS um, system but obviously all of this is, is uh, on this board here but uh, we'll have a look at it anyway over here we've got uh, 4 megs of flash memory which is identical to the memory found on this board here uh, we've also got a dedicated GPS controller and chipset just here and we've also got a small IC down here which uh, I'm not entirely sure what it's for but it's probably for RF amplification or something like that because uh, I can't find a part number on it. Um, uh, the part number doesn't come up with anything on Google. Um, we've also got a small 16 megahertz crystal down here, um, lots of small um, capacitors and re uh, resistors, um, we've got a few transistors in this part and uh, a few other small discrete components but yeah apart from that it's a, it's a very well designed board um, all of the cans are in the right place um, you've got some small uh, pins here we've got some, some small um, footprints here for com initial configuration and uh, on the other side it's got uh, a large number of pins here which again I think would be for initial configuration of of the um, of the firmware on the uh, memory chip so uh, yeah overall it's a very well designed board but I'm still not sure entirely what this coax is for because if all of the GPS um, 
if all of the GPS signals are received and processed on this board, um, I can't see why the main processor would need um, any information from the GPS antenna itself uh, when everything is, is processed here. So maybe this was just a, an additional extra, maybe, maybe in the future if they updated the firmware or um, did something where the processor would need a direct connection to the GPS antenna. So maybe that was just, uh, maybe that was just an afterthought. Well, this is definitely the end of the video this time, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll have another video up soon.